I wanted to talk about why it's so difficult to quantify cells and especially leukocytes on a fixed angle centrifuge. And I call it the one to 1000 ratio, okay? When we look at actual centrifuges, we're separating based on their density, okay? And red blood cells are the big guys, they go down. Platelets are the little guys, they go to the top. And white blood cells are the middle guys. So they're somewhere in the middle between both. But when you look at the sizes, they're very similar in size to red blood cells, which makes them a lot harder to separate based on their density because they're very similar in size. We published this table um, in one of our articles published in 2020, and it looks at the properties of blood cells. Look at the density of platelets, white blood cells, and red blood cells. And you can see that certain white blood cells are very similar in density to red blood cells. Now look at the numbers, frequency per microliter. 200,000, 5,000, 5 million, which means that for every one white blood cell, there's 1,000 red blood cells. And that's what I call the one to 1,000 ratio. For every one white blood cell, there's 1,000 red blood cells, okay? So every time that there's one white blood cell that's down here on the pure F tube and he wants to make it to the top, there's 1,000 red blood cells that are coming down, preventing him from trying to make it to the top. Now, one of the things, and of course, this is one of the articles that we had written in 2019, looked at fixed angle versus horizontal centrifuges. You'll see here very clearly, the one problem that we have with fixed angle centrifuges is that when this thing starts spinning, all the cells go to the back wall, okay? And if you're a little white blood cell, and you're, or you're down here, I shouldn't say little, the platelets are little, but medium-sized white blood cell, you go to the back wall here, and now you have to climb up this hill, this mountain, and as you're climbing up, your one white blood cell, there's 1,000 red blood cells that started here, and they're going down because of the heavy guys. And that little white, one white blood cell has a very difficult time trying to make it to the upper layer. When you go completely horizontally, of course, then, you know, instead of having to climb that mountain up, you can basically just free pass, okay? They're not going to clamp against any back walls, okay? They just free pass, and there's a much better separation of these layers because of the fact that this is going horizontally. Um, and that's the reason why we have such a better uh, accumulation of cells. As you can see in the graph here, these are from our papers. The amount of platelets and leukocytes, when we look at the different layers from our quantification method, a lot better distribution of cells using horizontal centrifuges when compared to fixed angles, especially the LPRF protocols, where a lot of the white blood cells actually stay in the red layer and actually don't make it to the upper layers, okay? I call that the one to 1,000 rule. For those that want to learn more about the different systems, et cetera, you know, you can visit the website at uh, bio-prf.com and you'll see, you know, based on the scientific articles, there's four times more cells, especially the white blood cells, when compared to standard centrifugation devices. And there's several advantages, of course. Um, higher growth factor release, of course, because we have more cells, more evenly distributed cells, et cetera, et cetera. You can read all this off the website. And I always tell colleagues when they're trying to make a decision on getting a centrifuge and learning more about centrifuges, you can go straight to Google and find out a lot of information directly from Google. So you can go on Google and do a search, fixed angle versus horizontal, and a lot of websites will come up and just read about them, okay? It's very well known in the literature. Swing out buckets, so horizontal centrifuges. This rotor is particularly useful when samples are to be resolved in density gradient. That's what we're trying to do with platelet-rich fibrin. We're trying to separate cells based on their density. Platelets are light, they go to the top. White blood cells are medium, red blood cells are heavy. You're trying to separate based on their density. The longer path length permits better separation of individual particle types from a mixture. However, this rotor is relatively inefficient for pelleting, okay? What is pelleting? Pelleting is better for fixed angle centrifuges. And pelleting is whenever you want to accumulate all of the cells at the bottom of a tube. And there's a reason for that. If I wanted to pellet, and I want to send all my cells to the bottom of a tube. So you might want to do that with stem cells. Let's say you have a lot of stem cells in a, in a big volume. You can spin very, very fast, get all the cells to come to the bottom, remove the liquid, and then now I have a very nice concentration of stem cells, okay? And that's called pelleting. If you do pelleting on a horizontal centrifuge, the cell that starts up here at the top of the tube, if he wants to pellet to the bottom, 
he's got to slowly go from here to, 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 to all the way down to the bottom. Okay, so it takes a long time to do that on a horizontal. If it's a fixed angled centrifuge and the cell starts here, he just goes boom, and then he goes whoosh, down to the bottom very easily, right? Because he's got a short distance to hit the back wall and then he can slide down to the bottom. And that's what pelleting is. And that's why you see it on the back wall. And that's why you also see it against the back wall and pellet it at the bottom. And that's what happens typically with the LPRF protocols. That's what happens as well uh, when you see all the dots on the back wall of a tube, that's a result of a fixed angle and all those cells literally getting smashed up or jammed against that back wall. Never forget that these devices are spinning at, you know, 700 RCF. They're spinning very, very fast. And so when they go to the back wall, boom, they go. They hit the back wall. Um, and then it's much harder to separate the layers thereafter. Um, another advantage that I learned about from online was that when we have a bigger difference between the RCF min and RCF max, of course, one of the big advantages is that you got a larger radius. So here on the website by Drucker, tube centrifuge and a horizontal centrifuge experience a larger radius, resulting in a higher RCF and more efficient forces. Higher G-force produce a better seal with a tube wall due to gel packing. The time required for complete centrifugation is only two thirds of the time required in a fixed angle centrifuge. And that's very important for us because on the website they show something 15 minutes to do it this way 10 minutes to do it this way if you go horizontal it's two-thirds the time so a typical protocol that might be 12 minutes is now down to eight minutes because when you go horizontal like that you can separate the layers more effectively and that's very very useful in platelet-rich fibering because always remember you're trying to beat the clock before this tube clots you want to separate your layers, right? You want to get all your platelets to the top, all your leukocytes to the top, and all your red blood cells down before it clots. And by going horizontal and, and going faster, making the separation happen faster, you can actually get a higher concentration of cells before it actually clots, okay? So there's several advantages here uh, with respect to, to horizontal centrifugation. If you look on Eppendorf, which is the most well-known centrifugation company in the world, they write literally word for word, gradient centrifugation definitely requires a swing out rotor so horizontal layers can form that remain in this position at the end of centrifugation, okay? It's very, very obvious. For those that work in science, they all know you gotta go horizontal to separate layers. For whatever reason in dentistry, you know, a lot of people are using these cheaper fixed angled centrifuges and they're not as effective for separating layers for the production of platelet-rich fibrin. Okay, so again, if you wanna read more, like I said, you can go visit uh, the website at BioPureF. But it's a very important concept. Like I said, when you look at the data and you look at ability to separate based on density, and you look at that one to 1,000 ratio, always remember that these white blood cells are very low in number, and it's very important if you wanna get them and you actually wanna get the leukocytes in the upper layers, it's much better to do it using a horizontal centrifuge.